Welcome, welcome to the Rick Elps Real Estate Show, trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona market. And today we're going to talk about affordability. I talked the other day about why. If somebody says the market's going to crash, you need to follow that up with the question of, well, why? It may, but if it does, why? Don't just hang it out there and say, well, things are all out of whack, so we're going to crash. It's not that easy. Affordability is one of those components that I want to look at. Inventory has to come up. Will inventory come up because we have a lack of affordability? Not right away, because it really doesn't mean anything to you. If you're sitting there and you're trying to hang on to your house, you don't feel like selling it because you got a great interest rate. The loan products we have are great. Uh, there aren't anything out there that's adjustable that's going to force you to dump it. So people are staying put. So until that changes, you're not going to see prices adjust at a rapid rate. Now, where are we today? Typical U.S. homebuyer's monthly payment is up near 20% from a year ago as prices rise. It's actually up 19.9%. That's pretty hefty. That's a little too much for people to bear. If we look at the affordability index from the Federal Reserve, anything that's in green means that the average household has more than enough income to make the average house payment. Now, this only goes out to late 2019, but you can see that there were periods where this housing was just not affordable. But... It gets kind of strange when you get down in here because this is based on where interest rates were, but people were not paying the average interest rate. They were rolling about, I think, I want to say 7% here. Let's see what it says. 6.2%, uh, 67 but nobody was paying that. See how the median income there is 39.7%? That's your adjusted payment share of your median income. Nobody was paying that. Everybody was getting interest-only loans or adjustable rate mortgages at 1%, or they were getting non-qualifying loans where you didn't even have to say you had a job. They were buying more than one house. They were just piling on and making this problem worse. I bring that up because we're not seeing any of that today. But this chart shows you if you didn't have an adjustable rate mortgage and if you were making 48000 a year, the total payment share of median income was 42%. That was extremely high in July of 2006 because your interest rate was 6.8%. Your median income was only eight, only 48,000. So in and of itself, you could not afford that house unless you got a zero interest only loan. And that's what people had. They had 1%. Oh, wow, now I can afford it. Well, not for long because it's gonna reset. And when it reset, the wheels fell off the wagon. Now, if we go down here, here's the drivers of affordability. So affordability is above that zero line, and then unaffordability is below. So you can see here that in 2013-14, we had this index of 12.6. What are the drivers? Well, let's take a look at the what we call the silly season right here. And right in this area right here, see that green line? That's income change right here. Incomes were going up. Interest rates were getting better. But prices were going up. So the prices came down below there. That was starting to hurt affordability. Where we're at now, it's kind of a trifecta. We're seeing incomes start to come up right here. We're seeing, though, that prices have gone up too far. So that makes the, unaffordabil the affordability go down. Interest rates are the largest driver of unaffordability and you can see that the affordability is way down because of interest rates so affordability is down because of those two main factors right now price changes and interest rates and I know you're all out there going well duh but that's what's happening in our market so if we look at where we are on a national scale with the Federal Reserve for home prices it really doesn't tell you a lot it shows you that we've been steadily going up went up came down during the Great Recession, climbing up, now we're kind of flatlined. If we look at monthly median sales prices, you can see that we've had our ups and downs, but since 2011, we've been steadily going up. So when it ties back to this chart back here, remove this, and we get to 2011, you can see that everything started to go in our favor. Home prices were going down, interest rates were going down, income was going up. That drove this chart that made things start to go up for a long period of time. So mm -hmm. affordability started to improve until we get to today. 
Now, I like this article by the uh, calculated, uh, it's called Calculated Risk. You can subscribe to his new newsletter. But here's the house price index to median household income. It's way up there. In fact, it's up, and this is comparing year over year, we're at almost 5%. We're at 4.2, I believe it is, compared to last year. So it's clearly unaffordable, just like it was here. So something has to adjust. So he goes on to say, well, what will adjust? House prices can take many paths. It seems likely that house prices will decline around 25% in real terms over the next five years to seven years, more or less. Now, before we get into that, what is real terms? Well, there's nominal and there's real. Real terms means the price of your house combined with the effects of inflation. So if inflation is high and your house price is staying flat, then that's going to be a nominal decrease or that's going to be a real decrease. The nominal increase is what's the actual price of the home went from 400 to 450, 400 to 390. But when you do this index and you put it all in and combine it with inflation, you end up with different numbers. So it doesn't mean that your actual house price is going to go down by 25%. The decline mostly be due to inflation or include some nominal price declines like the example I just gave you. Here's a graph of how long it took prices to recover. I'm going to show you that in a moment. The real return following the 79 peak was 6.5 years. It's easier to compare our market now to 1979 than it is 2008. Totally different animal. We had inflation back then. We didn't have inflation in 2008. We have solid lending. It took 11 years for real prices to reach their previous peak following the peak in 1989. And it took 14 five years 0.5 years to return to reach the real peak during the housing bubble. And here it is down here. This is what he was just talking about. 6.5 years to go from the when we started going down in 79 and going back up back here in 1986-87. 11 years to return to the peak in 90s. Kind of the dot-com bubble back here. And of course from here, 2008, it took us 14.5 years. And now in nominal prices, we're starting to see them start to decline how long is it going to take for it to recover from this peak here is what everybody's going to look at. So are we going to slide down to some affordability that will get us to where the market starts to balance out? Balance out? And in this article, it says 10% plus nominal price declines now seem likely over this period, five to seven years. So... That's kind of where we're at. During the housing bust, nominal prices fell 62% in Las Vegas, 56% in Phoenix, and 51% in Miami. I don't expect anything close to that level of price declines at this time, but it looks likely according to this one scenario. So that's one factor that will drive affordability, and that's just the fact that as prices slowly start to come down, combined with wages starting to increase, that we'll get closer to that balanced market. Are there things that could make this happen quicker? Yeah, there's some real issues going on with banking, with the economy. There's always a hiccup that's out there, but that's one factor, that's one why. House prices may come down, why? Well, because we've reached a peak in affordability to where many people are sitting out of the market. There are still a lot of people that can afford to buy, but not enough. There's just enough people can afford to buy now because of our low inventory to continue to drive up prices. That won't go on forever. That'll eventually shake itself out. We're at about 2,700 homes going under contract on a seven-day basis here in the Phoenix area. That's historically low. But we still only have 1.6 months of supply. Folks, that's the number that has to change. Even the Austin, Texas market kind of took a big dip. But now they've recovered where they have a 2.6 months of supply. So their big dive that they had seems to have paused because the difference between supply and demand has once again started to level out in favor of sellers once again. And it's happening nationally. So something has to change there. That's the why. Why will inventory increase? You're sitting at home. You got an interest rate below 4%. I'm afraid you're just not going anywhere. Now, if interest rates somehow come down in the fives, people will start listing their homes. What's going to make interest rates come down in the fives? 
nothing anytime soon because we all know that once they do that that inflation's going to start rearing its ugly head yet again so i wouldn't want to be the fed uh chairman trying to make that decision but also keep in mind that they don't make interest rate decisions based solely on housing that's just one component their job is to keep the dollar stable and to keep inflation tame if real estate goes up or if it goes down that's just one component of the inflation measurement it's about 30 percent it's pretty big but if it's in housing's in trouble and yet everything else inflation is still roaring they're going to let housing just fall out the face of the earth to get everything fixed so there isn't one person or one button that they push that go well all right housing's been beat up enough let's change the interest rate doesn't work that way i wish it did we'd all make phone calls and get it done i think it's healthy for us to have a market that is going to slowly decline over time not enough to wipe people out but enough for affordability to start to catch up the question is do people have the patience for that hard to tell i hope this helps do me a favor share this video with your friends punch the like button take care